Masters for uh, giving me this opportunity to present my work here. Uh, so I'll be talking on uh, bounds for the reduction number of primary ideals in dimension three. And uh, uh, in dimension three, because um, uh, these statements are there for higher dimensions as well, but it is more interesting in dimension three. For dimension less than or equal to two, um, results are already known. So uh, I'll need my basic setup for that. So throughout the talk, R is a Noetherian local ring of positive dimension, and I is an M primary ideal. Uh, now, a sequence of ideals is um, uh, called an I admissible filtration if uh, it satisfies these three properties. So the first one uh, just says that it is um, decreasing filtration, and the second one is uh, the multiplicative property, and the third one is uh, what makes it I admissible. So for a filtration, we define uh, reduction. Uh, reduction is an ideal J, uh, such that Jin is equal to In plus one for all N large. And uh, it is called minimal reduction if it is uh, minimal with respect to containment among all the reductions. So when the residue field is infinite, then minimal reductions exist. And therefore, uh, we assume for all our statements that uh, residue field is infinite. There is a standard way to reduce the problem to um, that case. Okay, now to keep track of these indices, uh, To keep track of these in incidents, uh, uh, n, here, we define the uh, reduction number. So uh, basically, this equality ensures that the Ries algebra of i will be finitely generated over the Ries algebra of j. And the generators will have a degree at most um, uh, n at most uh, the, the value of n where after which it becomes equal. So that uh, number is uh, preserved in the invariant reduction number. Okay, so we define uh, the reduction number of i with respect to j as uh, uh, supremum of uh, all the values n such that i n is not equal to j i n minus one. Okay, so it is an important problem to uh, uh, give bounds on this uh, reduction number and uh, uh, desirably uh, computable bounds. So one uh, such bound is known in terms of Hilbert coefficients. So let me define Hilbert coefficients. For any I admissible filtration, we look at this length function, um, length of R mod I n, and this is known as the Hilbert Samuel function of I then it is well known that uh, there is a polynomial. This, this function, this length function is of polynomial type, which means that there is a, uh, there is a polynomial with rational coefficients uh, uh, such that this length function coincides with the, this polynomial uh, for all the large values of n. And this polynomial will have degree d, which is the dimension of the ring. Uh, in, this is a rational polynomial, and in fact, uh, uh, we can normalize the coefficients and then we can write it in this fashion uh, where all the coefficients are uh, uh, integers. So this EII's are integers and these coefficients are known as the Hilbert coefficients of I. So uh, it looks like that these Hilbert coefficients are um, invariants of asymptotic powers of uh, I, I mean the asymptotic uh, uh, INs uh, for this filtration. But uh, uh, it turns out that these are uh, very important and uh, they contain a lot of information, uh, very deep in information about the structural properties of the uh, filtration I or the uh, ring and even the blow up algebras of I. So um, uh, we restrict ourselves for this talk uh, to the iadic filtration. So we always consider I is the uh, powers of I. Uh, the, the I is the filtration defined by the powers of I. Then, um, yeah, so now going back to the reduction number. So if uh, R is one dimensional Cohen-Macaulay local ring, then um, Ri is less than equal to E naught I minus one. Uh, this Ri is a minimum of all the reduction numbers. 
RJIs, which I defined earlier. So RI is less than or equal to E0 minus 1. Uh, 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 later, Vasconcelos proved that in any dimension, uh, positive dimension, this RI is bounded above by D times multiplicity of I by order of I minus 2D plus 1. Uh, where order is defined as the largest positive integer n such that i is contained in m to the power n. Okay, and uh, this is the best uh, bound known uh, for reduction number um, uh, in higher dimension, but we will see that uh, this is a large bound. This is large. This is larger than what we have got. Okay, and a non cohen macaulay version of the above results uh, can also be found in uh, um, literature. So uh, now uh, Rossi uh, proved that the reduction number is uh, less with respect to uh, a minimal reduction j is less than or equal to the first Hilbert coefficient E1 minus the multiplicity E0 plus length of R mod i plus 1. And uh, this is true only when dimension is uh, at most 2. Okay, And here is uh, this year is not correct. This is not 1988. This is... Uh, um, 1999 or 2000 maybe. So um, this, this bound was given in terms of the first uh, uh, Hilbert coefficient and the multiplicity. This is a linear bound. It is nice and it is computable. But uh, it is known only for dimension at most 2. Uh, for d greater than or equal to 3, it is believed to be true. No counterexamples are known, but uh, it is an open problem. Okay, so our motivation was to understand uh, the difficulties in extending the proof of Rossi for uh, uh, this bound in dimension larger than 2. And uh, we figured out that there are two major difficulties. The first one is when, the first one is that the reduction number does not behave well with respect to uh, superficial elements, which means that uh, this, say I say R, I write R prime as uh, R mod X, where X is a superficial element, uh, then R of i r prime and r of i, uh, these are related in this manner, and this inequality is not useful for this for us. We would like to know a precise relation between these two, if we want to uh, follow the proof of Rossi. But in general, uh, there are no uh, uh, relation, clear relation between uh, these two invariants. And the next problem is uh, that uh, the Ratliff-Rush uh, filtration of i. Uh, which I will not define, uh, it does not behave well with respect to superficial elements, which means that these two operations do not commute. I n tilde r prime is not equal to I n r prime tilde for all n greater than or equal to 1. So um, if we uh, get hold of these two uh, difficulties, then we can uh, prove Rossi's bound. And there are some cases when uh, we can get rid of these two difficulties. Uh, for example, these are the cases. So when depth of, so in dimension three, now if depth of GI is greater than or equal to one, or if uh, depth of the, uh, the uh, associated graded ring of the um, ratliff rush filtration is uh, greater than or equal to two, or if the uh, second and the third Hilbert coefficient vanish, or uh, if E to I vanish and I is asymptotically normal, or E to I is zero and GI is generalized cohen macaulay So in all these cases, we, um, uh, get that uh, Rossi's bound hold in dimension 3. And uh, uh, basically what is happening is uh, those two problems which I uh, stated uh, can be handled in these cases. So, but of course, these are very restrictive conditions and we would like to uh, uh, get, we would like to get rid of these conditions or um, we would uh, like to get uh, uh, some bound on reduction number without putting a strong hypothesis. So, so, and there is a hope because we noticed that, uh, uh, yeah, if depth of GI is uh, positive, then the reduction numbers are preserved going modulo superficial element, but uh, this relation holds even if depth of GI is zero. And uh, here is an example for that. Uh, this is taken from a work of Rossi and Walla. So in this case, depth of GI is uh, zero uh, but this is dimension two case, depth of GI is zero, but reduction number uh, modulo superficial element is uh, same. 
So basically, we have to look at the question that uh, when uh, does it happen that uh, uh, reduction numbers are preserved? Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, we tried to find relation between the reduction numbers, and we got this useful lemma. So in a Noetherian local ring of uh, dimension d, um, uh, positive dimension d, and also positive depth, uh, we have that if uh, if the reduction number of i mod x is strictly less than reduction number of i. Uh, then in this interval, uh, which is closed from left side and open from the right side, i n tilde is not equal to i n. Okay, and uh, using this lemma now, if I define this uh, invariant rho i, which is minimum of i greater than equal to one, such that i n is equal to i n tilde, for all n greater than equal to i, uh, then we get that if rho i is less than equal to r j i minus one, then uh, Rossi's bound holds. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, this is a uh, restriction here uh, for rho i, and uh, this is not in general true. So we have examples when uh, this is not true, uh, So, and also examples where this is true. So again, there is some restriction on the ideal. So this is one more uh, case in that list which I uh, displayed earlier, uh, when rest is bound hold in dimension 3. So then moving on, uh, uh, in our effort to find the relation between the reduction numbers, we uh, could show that if depth of GIT is uh, positive for some t greater than or equal to 1, uh, then uh, reduction numbers are related in this manner. Okay? And in particular, we can always put this t to be equal to rho i, and therefore uh, uh, rj i is always less than or equal to r i mod x plus rho i minus 1. So then uh, using this, we could generalize uh, the, the first condition on the list I displayed uh, to the following theorem, that if depth of GIT is positive for some t greater than or equal to 1, which always happens, uh, then uh, RJI is less than or equal to even minus E0 plus length of R mod i plus t in dimension 3. So this is a linear bound. Uh, which we have got. Moreover, uh, we can further reduce it looking at the value of uh, the reduction number. I mean, suppose if we know that reduction number is k mod t for some k between 1 and t minus 1, then this t can be replaced by k here. And uh, particularly uh, useful corollary is that if depth of g i square is positive and the reduction number is odd, then again we get uh, Rossi's bound here. All right. So uh, here is an example uh, which shows that uh, the bound, so in this case, this depth of gm cube is greater than or equal to 1. And therefore, by our result, uh, this is the upper bound with plus 3 here uh, for reduction number, which turns out to be 7. However, if we calculate Vasconcelos's bound, this is 19. So this uh, new bound is uh, better uh, in this case. All right. Okay, so, but uh, ideally we want to remove all the hypothesis and get a bound. So here is the result. For a Cohen-Macaulay local ring of uh, dimension larger than uh, 2, strictly larger than 2, uh, suppose depth of GI is greater than or equal to D minus 3, then uh, RGI is less than or equal to this Rossi's bound plus some new terms, which is E2 minus 1 times E2i minus E3 of i. Okay, so, so the second and the third Hilbert coefficient uh, here come into picture when we move to dimension 3. Okay, and uh, in particular for the small values of E2 here, we get linear bound. Say when E2 is 0 or E2 is 1, um, then this is a linear bound. Uh, this. So ideally we want a linear bound, but here uh, in our result we have got a quadratic term here of E2 squared. Okay, so in dimension 3, uh, this is an interesting result uh, without any uh, hypothesis on i. Okay, and then, uh, um, uh, yeah, so as I said, when e2 is uh, 0 or 1 and 2, so for these small values, we are getting linear bounds here. Okay, now one would also uh, observe that uh, this... Uh, this additional term present here, e2 minus 1 times e2 minus e3 of i, this must be a non-negative term. Otherwise, uh, otherwise uh, Rossi's bound is proved in dimension 3, which is uh, 
uh, not believable. So we suspect that this is greater than or equal to zero for any M primary ideal, but we could prove it only for integrally closed ideals. So this gives a bound on E3 of I, an upper bound on E3 of I. It is E3 of I is less than, uh, is less than equal to E2 into E2 minus one for integrally closed ideals. Okay, so, uh, okay, so the, the difficulty, as I mentioned, is that uh, uh, the Radcliffe rush does not behave well with respect to superficial elements. And uh, uh, yeah, so, and then some, uh, if we get rid of that, then again, uh, we get Rossi's bound. So one such condition uh, is when E2 and E3 vanishes. And uh, this was proved by Tony that in dimension three, if E2 and E3 uh, becomes zero, then Radcliffe rush filtration behaves well modulo superficial element. But if I is integrally closed, then uh, E2 is uh, zero, um, implies that GI is Cohen Macaulay. So this is a strong condition and it does not differentiate between uh, Cohen Macaulay um, associated graded rings and uh, uh, I mean, non Cohen Macaulay cases. So uh, this is not desirable. This is too strong. Okay. So uh, in fact, for integrally closed ideals, we, uh, uh, we get some necessary and sufficient conditions for the Ratliff rush filtration of uh, I uh, behaving well modulo superficial element. And one such result is uh, the following. Uh, let R be a Cohen Macaulay local ring of dimension greater than or equal to three and I is an M primary ideal. Then uh, the Ratliff rush filtration behaves well. If the Ratliff rush filtration behaves well modulo superficial sequence, then we have this inequality. Uh, this inequality was earlier known when, uh, with the condition that depth of GI is greater than or equal to D minus one. So this provides a necessary condition for checking uh, whether Ratliff rush behaves well. Okay, and uh, uh, here is an example where we can apply this. So in this example, um, uh, this uh, E3 is minus one, and E2 minus E1 plus E0 minus length of R mod maximal ideal is zero. So the inequality is not satisfied, and therefore the Ratliff rush of the maximal ideal does not behave well, modulo superficial element. Okay, but for our problem, we need sufficient conditions. So we prove this, uh, uh, these interesting bounds on E3 of I for integrally closed ideals. So if I is an integrally closed M primary ideal and J is a minimal reduction of I, then we have these three bounds on E3 of I. And uh, here, if you notice that uh, uh, four, so they are not related to each other directly. I mean, there are some indirect relations because from four we can get to five if we know that Rossi's bound holds in dimension three. Uh, but we do not know that even then we can prove this bound, okay. uh, which is a computable upper bound for E3. And uh, uh, then for integrally closed ideals, we know that E2 is uh, larger than uh, E1 minus, is greater than equal to uh, E1 minus E0 plus length of R mod I. And so we can bound this number by E2 of I, but in fact, uh, we can actually bound E3 of I by E2 minus one by two times this, okay? And uh, so these are interesting bounds. And what is more interesting is that uh, if uh, in dimension three, if equality holds in any one of four, five or six, then the Ratliff rush filtration of I behaves well, modulo a superficial element, and consequently Rossi's bound will hold. Okay, so these are some computable, uh, at least five and six are computable conditions uh, when we can be sure that Rossi's bound holds. Okay, and we have the converse statements as well. Suppose the Ratliff rush filtration behaves well, modulo a superficial sequence, x1, x2, xd minus two, uh, then uh, equality holds in uh, four provided RGI is less than or equal to three, equality holds in five provided uh, even minus E0 plus length of R mod I is less than or equal to two, and equality holds in six provided E2 of I is less than or equal to three. Okay. So uh, f uh, this is for integrally closed M primary ideals, and in fact, uh, uh, we could uh, actually um, um, improve uh, the bound for integrally closed uh, ideals. So in that case, uh, the hypothesis is same, uh, I is integrally, but I is integrally closed, and uh, depth of GI is greater than or equal to D minus three. Then now RGI is less than or equal to the Rossi's bound plus this term, and this term is smaller than E2 into E2 minus one minus E3 of I, the earlier bound.
Okay. So this is the best uh, we can have. And uh, uh, Rossi's bound still remains uh, open and mystery for us. So uh, uh, that's all. And then we have some uh, generalizations in uh, Noetherian, uh, for Noetherian local rings. So this uh, bound uh, of Rossi, in, uh, uh, even in dimension less than equal to 2, is not known for filtration uh, and for uh, Noetherian local rings. Uh, if we assume that the ring is book bomb, uh, then we can have some bounds. So in what? So, uh, OK. So this is the last slide. I'll just continue. If R is one-dimensional book bomb local ring, uh, then we have Rossi's bound with some additional terms here. So E1 i minus E1 j uh, minus E0 i plus length of R mod i plus 2. So in place of plus 1, we have plus 2. And E1 j will appear here. This is a standard thing. It appears everywhere. And uh, uh, then for two-dimensional book bomb local ring, uh, uh, again, if we assume that depth of GIT is positive for some t greater than or equal to 1, then um, RGI is less than or equal to E1 minus E1 j minus E0 i plus length of R mod i plus t plus 1. So this t will uh, appear here. Okay, and uh, uh, that's all. So... So these are some references, and uh, uh, all these results were joint work with uh, Mosmi Mandal and uh, Anut Kumar Yadav. Thank you very much.